In 1750, not far from the coast of the Arctic Ocean, a merchant named Lyakov discovered two islands covered with animal remains. In his honor, the islands were named the Big and the Small Lyakovsky. The Tsar gave him the exclusive privilege of exploiting the mammoth ivory. Ever since, expeditions and discoveries have considerably increased. Most of the specimens can be seen today in the Natural History Museums of Moscow and St. Petersburg. Stalin gave the order to civilize the North, which was rich in natural resources. In successive waves, men and women left for the Great North. The Soviet Union invested fortunes in the construction of cities and ports to open the Northeastern Maritime Route, important not only for Russia, but for international trade, since it's the shortest link between the West and the East. Numerous geological and geographical expeditions were organized to most of the Russian Arctic islands. These men became heroes because of their enthusiasm and courage in facing the unknown. Without them, the Great North would not have become as important as it is. They created polar bases and radio navigation, set up drilling and launched scientific research linked to the mammoth. New specimens were constantly being discovered and taken to national museums. It's thanks to the first Russian and Soviet polar expeditions that Dmitry and his team are now able to come here, six time zones from Moscow. Alexei Tikhonov, one of Dmitry's colleagues, is at the Paleontology Museum in St. Petersburg. The Russian Academy of Sciences is in favor of mammoth ivory trading since it helps finance scientific expeditions. You can find mammoth remains in fairly large quantities in North America, in the western part of Russia and in Europe, but you only find the bones there. To find bones with flesh still on them, you have to go to Siberia. For scientists, the most interesting discoveries are those which help us to understand the mammoth's way of life, how it lived and nourished itself. Thanks to certain analyses, we've been able to find partially digested plants in their eternal organs. The only entire adult mammoth discovered, the Adams mammoth, was found in 1799. After that, baby mammoths from the Magadan region were discovered. The others are only fragments of skeletons with some of their flesh and hides. And so, in 200 years, only one whole mammoth specimen has been found. On these shelves, you can see mammoth bones, jaw bones, and teeth. The room is unique. Scientists who participate in expeditions trek through the tundra, driven by a true passion. It's a research terrain they know well. Looking for tusks every summer means suffering. In hostile regions, they have to hike for dozens of kilometers in the tundra. The number of tusks they find depends on the number of kilometers they travel along the banks of the lakes and rivers. 
Sometimes an expedition can end in tragedy. Last year, one of the men got lost and never came back. The mammoth's disappearance was no doubt due to changes in climate. Its long incisors were formidable defenses. The mammoth was an herbivorous animal. Accustomed to a cold climate, its body was covered with a coat of wool and hair that was up to 50 centimeters thick. 10,000 years ago, the planet warmed up. The steppes were transformed, the tundra became swampy, trees began to grow, and the mammoth was unable to adapt to the changes. The radical change in its environment was undoubtedly fatal to the woolly mammoth, although its total extinction remains a mystery. For Fedya and his team, stranded on Lyakovsky Island, fighting winds that often reach gale force, things haven't changed since that initial heroic exploration period. Their equipment is old and outdated. They have to manage with what they've got and are constantly repairing their various vehicle motors. They can only count on themselves. Tundra is tundra, bisok. The tundra is full of sand. That's why the vehicles are always breaking down. It's old equipment, but we've got to make do with it. Where else can we work? We've got to eat. Stop! You're going to damage the rubber treading. Today, in spite of horrible weather, a team is leaving with its caterpillar vehicle for a corner of the tundra where a tusk has been spotted. The vehicle's cabin isn't big enough to hold all the men. Some have to ride on the roof in spite of the rain. After several hours, the strange convoy comes to a halt. This time, the ivory hunters use a different extraction technique. After freeing the tip of the tusk, they ignite a small wood oven. Since the combustible is not totally dry, they use fuel to start the fire. A few days ago, two of the men happened to find it. They loosened it a little, and, and now we're going to finish the job. After having cleared 50 centimeters of earth, they set up the oven. The pan heats the water and gives off vapor. This vapor will gradually melt the frozen ground around the tusk. <laughs> Throughout the day, they repeat the same movements several times before going back to the base at nightfall. Да ладно, вчера точно заходим. 
Нет, тут получше, да?